Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me on the Wholehearted Christian. This want to quickly, shorthand form, explain to you why we have so many different versions of the Bible, how we got them. Okay, because I think there is a big misunderstanding on how we got the different versions of the Bible, and I want to do my best to inform you all without going through all of the rigorous details, just some of the things to show you how we got these different versions, and then I'll go through a bit of the things that I use to study and understand the Bible in my own time on studying. Okay, so here is a collection of the Bibles that I use. This one is the Message Bible. This one is the Amplified Bible. This is my favorite Bible, the John MacArthur Study Bible, New King James Version. Um, this one here is the A.W. Tozer King James Version Bible. And under that I have just a regular King James Version Study Bible. Uh, this one is our ESV Study Bible. This is also like my second favorite. I love the ESV version. Um, here we have the NIV Study Bible, Zondervan NIV Study Bible, and another Zondervan NIV Study Bible. Uh, this is a Zondervan NASB, the New American Standard Bible. We have uh, Teen Extreme Bibles for the children and their New King James Version as well. Okay, so now that you've seen my Bibles, let me get into why we have so many different versions, okay? Um, on any normal day, on any average day, on any regular day, I'm probably using the English Standard Version. That is probably my favorite, that is my favorite version of the Bible to use. That gives me the uh, correct understanding, that, that words it properly, like I think it should be worded as translated from the King James. And so ESV would probably be my favorite version followed by the New King James Version. However, I do in all things always uh, honor the King James Version as the epitome, as the highest form of the Word of God that we have delivered to us. So I will say that I am not a King James only person, but I do acknowledge the King James, in my opinion, as the pinnacle of all the versions of the Bible. So with that being said, let me get into explaining why we have so many different versions. Okay, so we can clear up all of this stuff that people say that's not true, that is through ignorance. Um, we'll, we'll start with Group A. Group A, who were the people who transliterated the King James Version from the manuscripts that they had. Mind you, Group A only had, and I don't know exactly how many manuscripts they had, but I'm just using a number to make a point. Uh, say Group A, who created the King James Version, they only had 100 manuscripts. They used these 100 manuscripts to make a Bible. In honesty, they rushed the process to make this Bible. Because they wanted to get it to press before another Bible maker got their Bible to press. So then they rushed and they made this Bible. And so whatever uh, we see, we got from those limited number of manuscripts. That came into being the King James Version Bible. I'm not saying that anything is wrong with the King James Version Bible because I just made it clear that I believe the King James Version Bible is the pinnacle because that's what we got first. But let's say this. Group B had 400 manuscripts. So if Group B had 400 manuscripts where Group A only had 100, Group B took those 400 manuscripts and matched them to what 100 manuscripts that group A had, making 500 manuscripts, and they put it all together, and then you get the new King James Version, and versions like these, that have more information, that have better uh, translation of words. 
where one word in the King James, they might have translated it as one thing. In the New King James versions and versions like these that came from Group B, they have more accurate translations of these words because they had more manuscripts to base them off of. Okay? So, Group A created one Bible off of a limited number of manuscripts. Group B had much more manuscripts and created a better version of, or more accurate version of Group A Bible. Okay? So then, Group C, which would be the last group, they had thousands and thousands of manuscripts from all different parts of the world where group A and group B were limited in their number, group C had many manuscripts from all over the world. And so then they took their number of manuscripts and put it together and compared it against group A and group B and said, okay, group A had 100 manuscripts, group B had 400 manuscripts, and we have thousands of manuscripts. So they go through looking through all the manuscripts and matching them up, which takes time, which takes dedication. So you cannot count these people out and say that their work is meaningless. You can't count these people out and say that they're not doing God a service. Even if you may not like it or you may not like their version, then don't read it. Don't use it. There are some versions that I cannot stand behind that I do not like, but I will not discredit their work and their ethic putting that Bible together because I know just by my own study to understand one or two verses or a couple of scriptures, they had to put a whole Bible together. So then I can agree some versions look like they came from the devil and then possibly, possibly. But then there are, are, are many versions that I believe that true God-fearing people can stand behind. And we, we do them a great disservice by talking down on their versions that they took their time to put together. So, with that being said, Group C uh, compared and contrast all of their versions, all of their translations, or all of their manuscripts with the other Group A and Group B's manuscripts. And, okay, so say if they said, okay, out of the 2,000 manuscripts we found, only 50 of them matched the manuscripts in Group A. So that's why you would see certain verses taken out or certain things taken out because they said, hey, out of our 2,000 uh, manuscripts, only 500 of these match the old King James. So then we would take those, whatever scriptures or whatever verses those were that were only in those 500 and not in the other 1500 and we'll say okay the majority text wins the majority the the 1900 uh translations have this scripture in it but only 150 or so have this so then we're going to leave it out. Why? Because it's not found in these other translations. Why is it not here? Now that part I do not know. Why they wouldn't be there. And a lot of what they said is because the manuscripts were being passed down to other people in other countries. And they were being copied by hand. There was no automatic copying like we have. We can scan and copy things. It wasn't like that. So then they were copying it down by hand. Somebody could have left something out. Somebody could have missed something. Any kind of mistakes could have been made by the hands of men but still even with these verses and scriptures that they have taken out in group c they still don't change the meaning or any of the doctrines that we have in this book all of the doctrines from the king james version to the niv to whatever other versions they got do not change the doctrines of what we believe but in my own opinion, I would still rather use the King James and my uh, ESV and those. But that is how we get all these different versions of the Bible. Okay, now I want to show you something cool. This Bible is called the Message Bible. It's a, a conversational type Bible. Meaning that it won't be worded at all how we see our King James worded. But if you look at that. This is after the king had made himself at home. He said to Nathan the prophet, look at this. 
Here I am, comfortable in a luxurious palace of cedar, and the chest of covenant of God sits under a tent. Now, that is absolutely not how it's worded in the Holy Bible, but you get the point. That's why it's called the Message Bible. It gets to the message in conversational language. So I love that Bible. A friend of mine gave me this, and it was another one, and I really appreciate her for it. Thank you. God bless you. Um, this is another book that I'm currently reading called 12 Ordinary Men. This is about the apostles, and this is by John MacArthur. This is another book that I'm currently reading, Power in the Blood, by Charles Spurgeon. This is another one I just picked up on my vacation, uh, Grace, God's Unmerited Favor by Charles Spurgeon. Um, I picked this one up on my vacation too, A.W. Tozer, The Pursuit of God. These, if you see that um, a lot of my books have some of the same authors because I trust these authors. I trust John MacArthur's word, um, Charles Spurgeon. Uh, they call him the Prince of Preachers, one of the most amazing preachers of his time. Um, A.W. Tozer, another great preacher. Uh, Prayers and Promises for Men, that's a book I'm, I'm going to get into looking at. I haven't looked at it yet. Um, this book was one of my favorite and most fluent to read on Pastoring by H.B. Charles Jr. A very wonderful book. Quick read, easy read. That's a great book. Um, Expository Apologetics by Vadi Bokum. This is another one of my favorite preachers. He uh, has a lot of knowledge, like a lot of knowledge. So if you're not into a lot of knowledge, you probably don't want to listen to him. But I'm talking about he will cram your brain until your head hurts. This is a good preacher. And this book... It was a good read. It was a little hard to read because you got to process so much information, but it's a good book. Um, this is a great book right here. What you know might not be so. I think this book would do a lot of good for a lot of people to read because it explains a lot of misinterpretations in the Bible that um, a lot of people take as truth and they're misinterpreted. That's a good book to read. Okay, so over here we have like all of these different uh, word for the days, these are different devotionals. I used to read them. I don't read them as much as I used to anymore. I now read Table Talk by Ligonier. That's a very, uh, a, a much better um, uh, devotional to me. But a lot of people still like these and that's fine. Um, for the children, we have like the Beginner's Bibles and all sorts of devotionals for boys and girls. And, you know, all of that stuff we got. Bible story books and all of that stuff, the beginner's treasury of stories, um, utmost devotional, the message Bible again, the soft cover version, one year Bible, um, holy oil, uh, a bunch of different books, Bible based books that, um, uh, they're just good to read. Okay, so here we have this is all my dad's stuff. You know, my dad passed away in 2015. He was a, a pastor for over 24 years. And um, these Bibles, all of this stuff, like, you can see how much he read it till they were, like, falling apart, man. But my dad had many versions of the Bible. He had uh, the old King James Version, then the Webster Bible, then the Good News Bible. I'm pretty sure these are King James Versions. Um, this is King James Version. Uh, this is the Salem Kerbin Reference Bible. Um, that's King James. That's New King James. Um, NIV Rainbow Study Bible. The NIV Bible. Uh, another New King James. Man, my daddy just had so many uh, study Bibles and different type of... Uh, just study material here some of this stuff i think this is charlene's stuff but uh some of this some of these just all this stuff my dad immersed himself in his word um the king james bible concordance kingdom woman prophecy books all this stuff my daddy had all these different books and i'm just picking up after him picking up all the different things that he had he just had some amazing books the old chart in the end times. I don't agree with a lot of stuff in that book, but it's um, still a good book because nobody understands the end times completely. So Fox's Book of Martyrs, we have that here. Fox's Book of Martyrs tells you how all the disciples died. This is a good read right here. Um, so we just have a, a bunch of Bible-based books, a bunch of encyclopedias uh, down here, encyclopedias and everything. Um, it's just good stuff that my dad had like like if you step back and take a look he has like a whole 
library here of things, Bibles and study Bibles. My dad was the man. I just wanted to tell y'all, like, every, even the little, tiny little Bible booklets, we got all of these things, man. My daddy had a whole bunch of stuff, man. My daddy just, he didn't let anything go. Anything dealing with the Word of God, he immersed himself in the Word of God. And so I'm just trying to do the same thing. So I hope that when y'all see the videos that I put out, the things that I do, y'all know that I really took my time on it. And I got this work ethic from my dad, the only place I could get it from. And I thank God for my father, and I thank God for thinking enough of me to instill it in me. So, God bless you.